Hey everybody, I'm Melody and I'm coming to you from Marmot, West Virginia. I'm in West Virginia for four months. I technically live in Nevada, but I'm here promoting a book that I co-authored, 100 Things to Do in West Virginia Before You Die. And what I want to share with you today is I'm a travel blogger, influencer, freelancer, and so forth. So I attend some pretty significant travel conferences. And I had one in April, I have one uh, coming up this weekend, and I have one next month. And so what I thought I would do is I would share some of the details I learn from these travel conferences with you because you might be in the road for a mark for sorry in the market for a road trip and I can help you uh, with that I can share all the information of some great cities and what's going on there some that you may not know so this video is gonna be kind of long uh, I'm just gonna actually show you some uh, clips from the paperwork that I brought home from said conference uh, this one's from actually STS domestic showcase which was in Huntsville Alabama go Huntsville so my daughter and I also have a travel conference Southern Travelers Explore and in 2022 Huntsville was the perfect host uh, city for our writers and our uh, tourism destinations a lot of people had not been to Alabama so we were really happy to get them there so without further ado I'm going to tell you about about 10 um, cities around the south these are all centered in the south that might uh, pique your interest. So let, I'm 54, we have to get on the glasses, of course. So we're gonna start with Meridian. So uh, my daughter lives in Jackson, um, my daughter and business partner, so we're pretty familiar with Meridian. Meridian is a great city, and I just wanna show you, this is the um, the Max, what they call the Max. It's an art, a Mississippi art and entertainment district. It's state of the art, absolutely amazing. Um, you can go here when you walk in, that's the uh, main, lobby area right here and it shows very famous uh, Mississippians and what they're famous for. For instance, Oprah, Jim Henson, creator of the Muppets, um, Tennessee Williams. The list is huge for Mississippi. You've got all kinds of great soul uh, blues performers. Then this is brand new. This is called the, the Three Foot Building. It's a 16 story art deco hotel. I haven't stayed there, but I'm really anxious to. It was just opening up the last time I was there. That's pretty fascinating. Um, there are carousels hand-painted wooden horse horse carousel horses around Meridian. Uh, so that's great if you like mural hunting or sculpture hunting or whatever. There's a whole bunch of those around town. And um, they are fashioned after the Denzel Carousel. Here it is. I think it's over 100 years old. It's one of the oldest in the South. These are all hand-carved uh, wooden carousel horses. Really fabulous. Um, it's a rare 19th century carousel from the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair. Um, a couple other points of interest, Weedman's is the oldest restaurant in Mississippi, 1870. It's fantastic. I recommend you go for brunch, but really, it's just great anytime. And I love the fact that whenever you go there, um, you sit down and there's a crock of peanut butter and crackers at the table. There's a story for you to read to understand that. But anyway, I love whenever a restaurant gives you something complimentary. That just makes my day. Um, there are lots of historic trails in Meridian. There's the Meridian Civil Rights Trail, the Meridian Civil War Trail, Mississippi Blues Trail, which I've done that one all through the whole state of Mississippi, and the Mississippi Country Music Trail. There's the Mississippi Children's Museum. Now, my granddaughter goes to children's museums all over the South, and she really, really loves this one. This is the one they go back to probably more than any. They have a darling little goodnight moon area and a real cute little play area for um, playing records or playing kitchen, all that sort of thing. I love that kind of thing. And let's see, what else? These are just a couple of reasons it says you can't miss Meridian. It says road trip to adventure, a group friendly attractions, meals to remember, heritage, uh, trails to follow and the perfect break. Meridian is located right here in the state of Mississippi. So anyway, hopefully you can visit there and I have a couple of uh, blog posts on wherever I may roam blog.com. You can read about Meridian, places to eat and uh, things to do there. Now we're moving on to the bluegrass region. So the bluegrass region is an area of Kentucky that they've they have a special uh, tourism board for and they promote horses, bourbon and Boone. I'm okay with that and we're talking Daniel Boone here. So this region is made up of all these areas of Kentucky, of Kentucky, which is a pretty great portion. So you have Frankfurt, the capital, you have um, Lexington over here, you have like all the horse races and everything. I was recently in Georgetown, that's another cute little town with a, a darling little main street. And so uh, the, these are broken down by city and county. I'm just going to read you a couple of the main attractions in some of the different counties. Clark County, which is where Winchester is, they have a beer cheese trail. Come on out, a beer cheese trail. I'm very intrigued by this one. They have the Bluegrass Her Heritage Museum. Pardon me, I do have bronchitis, so I generally don't talk like a Muppet. Uh, then we have Woodford and Midway County. They have the Castle and the Key Distillery. 
So if you've ever driven through this area, especially to get on the BG Parkway outside of Lexington, you have seen the castle. So I'm 54. When I was young, it was rumored Lee Major owned it at one time. I'm not really sure of that, but it is now like a tourist attraction. You can go there and you can have lunch or brunch. I think you can stay there too. That's also the home of Woodford Reserve Distillery. I'm a big fan of Doe Daddy Donuts. It's not mentioned on the paper, but Doe Daddy Donuts, really good. Lincoln County, Kentucky is famous for the Bluebird and the historic Ellen N. Depot and Museum. We have Paris, which is in Bourbon County, and that is a darling little town. My husband and I were RVing full-time for 15 months before we settled in Nevada. We stopped there and saw the little, well, it's not really little, the replica Eiffel Tower, which is really cute. Um, then they have the Paris uh, Train Depot, Trackside Restaurant. Madison County, Kentucky, you have the food, Fort Boonesboro State Historic Site and Chenault Vineyards. Lots of vineyards around this part of Kentucky. Who knew? Then in... Um, Let's see, Wilmore County, which is where Nicholasville is on the, outskirts, on the outskirts of Lexington, Camp Nelson Civil War Heritage Park. Uh, there's a couple, um, there's actually quite a few wineries there, three wineries in Lexington. So growing up, I was a regular in Lexington, and I mean by the ages of 19, 20, 21. So like, I mean, I used to go there for the bar scene, for the shopping, for the hot browns. Um, Lexington was a great city. It still is. 35 years later, everything in Lexington is still the same way I left it, only it's just bigger and better. Some of the um, more prominent attractions are the Keeneland Race Course, um, which is, of course, fantastic. I met Pat Day there. The first and only time I've ever been to a horse race, I met Pat Day. I think he's the most awarded uh, jockey, po possibly. Anyway, very cool. The Kentucky Horse Park. I'm not, I, I let me take that back. I typically am not a big fan of horses. I'm a cowgirl, hippos, that kind of thing. I went to the Kentucky Horse Park and I was literally in love. And if you go to the Kentucky Horse Park, make sure you see Elvis. He's a, ret a retired uh, award-winning horse and he is just the most beautiful horse I've ever laid eyes on. It's a fantastic place. Anybody in the family would love it and it's literally a whole day attraction. And then Ashland, um, the Henry Clay Estate. Henry Clay, hmm, love him or hate him, he had a big significant place in history and I'd never done anything uh, historic in Lexington until I went there. It's a great place to tour. They have several different tour tracks, so I really enjoyed that one. We have Franklin County, which is Frankfurt, um, the, the state capital, Buffalo Trace Distillery. I have a video on YouTube if you want to see what the Buffalo Trace Distillery tour is about. It's one of my best posts, so please give me some love on that one. Then the historic, uh, historic downtown shops and restaurants. It's a darling little town. I absolutely loved it. I don't think Frankfurt gets nearly enough credit uh, whenever we're talking southern cities. It was really great. Then Georgetown, the country boy brewing, and then they have a Japanese garden in uh, Georgetown. My dad and I stayed there last fall, and most of the things downtown were closed, unfortunately, because I really wanted to like dig into uh, Georgetown, but it was like a Sunday afternoon or something. We did go to a pretty cool market um, where they have like a pumpkin, a pumpkin house. They had a pumpkin house in the fall. Um, there's Harrodsburg, which is in Mercer County, and that's the Shaker village of Pleasant Hill. I haven't been to this area, but I, I read great things about it. It sounds fascinating. Um, then there's Anderson County with Four Roses Distillery, Wild Turkey Distillery, and a historic downtown and shops. So I'm sure that place is really kicking. Um, then they also have the Lover's Leap and Rising Suns wineries. So I might need to pencil in Anderson County, Kentucky. Um, Harrison County, which is where Cynthiana Cynthiana, I think that's how you pronounce it. I hear lots of great things there. I haven't been, but they have an opera house and they also have the world's largest Walking Dead mural. Did you watch Walking Dead? I did not, but I love a good mural. So there's also the Quiet Trails Nature Preserve. That kind of intrigues me. In Nicholas County, 36 miles from Lexington, you have the Blue Licks Battlefield State Resort Park and the Boone Cavern, Cabin, sorry, and the Kentucky Doll and Toy Museum. I love a good kitschy place like that. So that calls to me. And then in Madison County, you have the college there, um, quite a, an impressive law college. You have the Boone Tavern Hotel and Restaurant. I've heard great things about that. Also, the Kentucky Artisan Center. Uh, that should be impressive. We're moving on to Ridgeland, Mississippi. So Ridgeland, uh, right outside of uh, Jackson. That's probably one of Jackson's nicer areas, probably one of the nicer areas in Mississippi, if we're being honest. Um, it's on the Natchez Trace. Uh, Kate Seafood. This is an oyster place. My kids love to go there. I haven't been, but I would love to try these char-grilled oysters. They have the Renaissance Show Fountain. This is at the Renaissance Shopping Area, an outdoor shopping area. It's the only Apple store within miles and miles and miles. Um, it's a, just a fantastic little shopping area. Cute little shops. Great Whimsy Cookie Company is there. Great restaurants. Um, there's also a couple really nice hotels. If you're going to stay in Ridgeland, the hotels are there. They have this thing that I was not familiar with. I'm just going to show you this page. 
It's called the Natchez Trace Century Ride. And so it says, explore Ridgeland with a scenic bike ride on the historic Natchez Trace Parkway. The annual ride offers distance, ah, I'm sorry, of 8, 25, 50, 62, or 100 miles. I could probably ride the 8 miles on my own, but the rest I would definitely need an e-bike. And I do think you can rent e-bikes in Ridgeland now. So that's pretty cool. Um, it's also on the reservoir. And once upon a time, many years ago, I had just come back from Europe and I went to visit my daughter who was at Old Miss at the time. We were meeting in Jackson for some reason. And we go to this mall. I think the mall was relatively new at the time. And they were having this European car show. So I had been to Athol, Scotland just a few you know, days before or something like that and saw this great like Bentley uh, car show, like classic Bentleys. And so literally this Eurofest was every bit as impressive. So here's a little tiny picture from it. Um, but anyway, it was pretty fascinating. So if you love car shows, I love a good car show. So you may want to think about that one. So this is a sheet, uh, a one-off sheet just on Georgetown. And I will add that Georgetown is in Scott County and they say that that is the fastest growing county in Kentucky. So again, Georgetown, um, they got, they have two campgrounds, 38 brand name chain hotels, a brewery, a distillery, a um, couple things of that nature. It's also where Elijah Craig was. He was the, actually, he discovered the bourbon distil, distilling process in 1789. He was a reverend too, fun fact. Now, let's moving on. We're going to, I'm going to save that one for later because that's one of my favorites. We're going to go to um, FOCO. FOCO is Forsyth County, Georgia. And my dear friend Joni works for the tourism board there. I knew nothing about FOCO, Georgia, until I met with her. And let me tell you, I was really impressed. I really want to take my granddaughter here. Um, this is in the upper part of Georgia right here. Let's see. It is, uh, it's on Georgia Highway 400, which is called the Hospitality Highway. They have hot air ballooning. Hot air ballooning in Georgia. Had no idea. They have the Shady Grove Campground. Let me tell you about the Shady Grove Campground. You're going to want to look this up because this campground is so fascinating and they call it Timberline Glamping. Um, so they have glamping tents, safari tents, and then they have these incredibly extravagant geodesic dome tents. And one of my friends has stayed there. It is absolutely magnificent. And I'm guessing probably it's a good, great place for seeing the stars because your whole ceiling and everything is just glass or plastic or whatever it's made of. I'm not sure. But anyway, I definitely want to go there. Um, so then there's also Lake Lanier. I think they have like a, don't they have a Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville? It doesn't say here, but I know Lake Lanier's pretty famous for something. I'm just not exactly sure what. It's on the Chattahoochee River. Got the Chattahoochee River here. And you can go kayaking, canoeing, tubing, and fishing there. Um, so anyway, it, it just sounds like a great place. And again, it's Forsyth County, Georgia. It doesn't really mention any of the town's names in here. So Forsyth County. Discoverfoco.com. And moving on, we are going to go to Sea Rock City. Sea Rock City, which is a lookout mountain in Georgia. From this spot, you can see seven states. It is quite impressive. My in-laws, a gazillion years ago when they got married, that was their honeymoon. They went to the falls and they went to Sea Rock City. So it is actually a hospitality company. And they maintain a lot of different things. And I'm going to just read you the things that are under their umbrella. So there's the Battle of Chattanooga, Clumpy's Ice Cream, Good Dog Go, which looks like a hot dog place, Grandview, looks like lodging, Lookout Mountain Riverview Inn, Starbucks, Create Discovery Museum, Medal of Honor Heritage Center, Incline Railway, and some kind of inn. I can't read that one. It's crammed together. But anyway, here are some pictures. Here's a picture from the viewing spot where you see the seven cities or seven states. Here's one of the Sea Rock City barns. I actually just saw one in West Virginia just the other day. I've seen them pretty much all over the, you know, the South. Uh, so that's what you're going to, Sea Rock City. My friend Rosemary, uh, she's a blogger, influencer. She just got to help paint one of these barns. Uh, that was just really cool to be part of that. So here's a picture right here from the lookout. It's really a beautiful part of tennis, or sorry, of Georgia. Sorry, lookout, lookout Mountain, Georgia. And there are 900 barns painted across America for the Sea Rock City. I think that's fascinating. 900, isn't that amazing? So uh, there's Clumpy's Ice Cream, which is a growing Chattanooga ice cream brand. So you can go have ice cream there. You can do like a bunch of historic things and it's pet friendly. So this restaurant right here um, called Cafe 7, it, it says art in nature. It's a modern twist outdoor dining experience, but it's pet friendly. I love a restaurant that has pet friendly uh, offerings. And here's a picture right here 
of some waterfall. Pretty fascinating. Okay, let's move on to the Old 96 District. Old 96 District, South Carolina. It's not a very pretty brochure, no pictures to show you, but this area contains McCormick County, Lawrence, Greenwood, Edgefield, and Abbeville counties. Um, it looks like a great place for a road trip. I've wanted to do this with my friend Sarah for a long time. Like I think it would really be great for she and I to get in the car and drive for like 10 or 12 days and introduce everybody to the towns on the old 96 district. They haven't been interested in that yet, but I certainly have mentioned it to them. Uh, one of the things they have here is the old Edgefield pottery, which are the, if you've ever seen the jug pottery vases things and they have faces on them, they originated here. Um, so I think uh, that's really cool. There's vintage villages. More than 250 miles of hiking, white, uh, walking, and biking trails. There's six state parks within this area, um, and they range from a Revolutionary War site uh, to, it says, more than 100 campsites on the water. So that's really impressive. It's also home to the 96th National Historic Site, which is where the first Revolutionary War Battle of the South took place. I really know nothing about the Revolutionary War, so I'm kind of lost here. But if I went here, maybe I would get it. There's also the Dr. Benjamin Hayes Historic Preservation Site, and really cool, the National Wild Turkey Federation's Winchester Museum. They classify it as weird and the only museum in the world dedicated to turkeys. I think that sounds like really fabulous. They need pictures though. Gulf County, Florida. So I've had several friends who work for tourism in Gulf County, Florida. It is way across the state and I lived in Florida 10 years and I never made it over to this area. So I hate that I didn't get there, but maybe sometime in the future. The area is comprised of St. Joe Beach, Port St. Joe, Indian Pass, Cape Sand Blass, and this little word right here, I'm not even going to uh, try to pronounce it because I'm sure it's some Indian name that I'm going to botch. So I just won't even pronounce it. But um, in this count, in this county, Gulf County, Florida, there are two time zones. So that still gets really confusing because I live my the closest town to me in Nevada is in Utah, which is a different time zone, and it's a pain. It really is. Uh, one of the annual events in Gulf County is the Tupelo Honey Festival. Gulf County is one of the few unique Florida panhandle areas where beekeepers gather the only pure Tupelo honey on earth. It's harvested from white Tupelo gum trees in that town I can't pronounce, in that town. So if you've ever had Tupelo honey, you know it never crystallizes. It's always absolutely beautiful. It tastes wonderful. A lot of people think that Tupelo honey is from Mississippi. There is a Tupelo, Mississippi. Wrong. Nope. Elvis is the only thing that came from Tupelo. Tupelo honey comes from Gulf County, Florida. So you would have to pick that up as a souvenir while you're there. There's also the Forgotten Music Festival and the Blast on the Bay Songwriters Festival. Now, I haven't been to a songwriters festival in Gulf County, but I have been to one in Fort Myers. And it is really fascinating. If you love music, this is where you're going to go meet um, and hear living legends uh, that wrote all your favorite songs and all this sort of thing. So, like, I love that kind of thing. If you've never experienced it, there are a lot of them. So watch for a songwriters festival. It also boasts that Gulf County is the only panhandle with a westward facing sunset. Fascinating. Here's a few pictures of Gulf County. This is like really getting back to nature. It's just a beautiful area, non-commercialized. And here it is right here for down here at Key West or we're way over here. Like I think this is like near Mariana, Destin, Pensacola. It's right down here. So it's all the way down here, very near Apalachicola if you're familiar with that, where the oysters come from. Fredericksburg, Virginia. Fredericksburg, Virginia. I haven't done a lot of travel in Virginia, but I'm always intrigued by it. So in Fredericksburg, this is the view of downtown Fredericksburg. It's absolutely beautiful. It looks like what I think any historic city in Virginia would look like. Um, here's some historic costumed interpreters. Again, you know, I'm, I'm in love with that. They have a new civil rights trail. Um, they've partnered with University of Mary Washington's James Farmer Multicultural Center to create a local civil rights movement trail telling um, about the history of the city. That's pretty fascinating. They also have a place called Ferry Farm, which is where George Washington spent his first and formative years. I've never even heard about this. So anyway, that's pretty intriguing. They also have a place called Reclaim Arcade, which has 75 plus vintage arcade and pinball games. I love stuff like that. So any kind of vintage arcade or anything, I'm there. And if they have a Miss Pac-Man game, I'm gonna be there for probably hours. They also have um, a place called, uh, let's see, Waters End, no, sorry, I take that back. Well, they have three impressive sips and savor places. They have Waters End Brewery, Haley's Honey Meadery. Have you tried mead? I absolutely love it. It's honey wine, um, super fun, but you can get really good mead or really good bat. I guess it's the same with wine and beer too. 
But anyway, I was intrigued by this. It says, taste the port finished bourbon that won the 2016 World's Best Bourbon at the A. Smith Bowman Distillery. So anyway, three fascinating things there. And on the back of here, we talk about the Rising Sun Tavern. I'm guessing at the tavern, they serve you in period clothing. That's really cool. I, I love doing that like in Estonia or somewhere like that. You can do it right here in the United States. The Hugh Mercer Apo Apothecary Shop. So fun fact, when I was in sixth grade, my class visited Williamsburg, Virginia. It was the only time I've been to any kind of like period place like that. I absolutely loved it. We went to Jamestown. Um, but you can just kind of fashion that right here at this apothecary. So that's cool. Then they have the James Monroe Museum. Anything presidential, sign me up. So I think I would love this town. There's also a historic Kenmore. Looks like maybe a, a plantation or something. And then the George Washington's Ferry Farm. Here's a picture of it where George Washington spent his formative years. So there's also an air museum if you like that. Um, looks like quite a, a few great things here. Some Civil War statues, costumed interpreters, park rangers, and so forth. So again, that's Fredericksburg, Virginia. We'll do one more, one more. I'm not sure if it's Lafayette or Lafayette, Louisiana. There's a lot of towns with this name and they all pronounce them different. So for state of the argument, we're just gonna call it Lafayette. So, so in Lafayette or Lafayette or however you wanna call it, Louisiana, well, we know there's gonna be some great Creole and Cajun foods, as you can see from here. The pictures are quite fantastic. Uh, but let me tell you what you can do in this city. And this city is right here, right almost directly in the center of Louisiana. So we now have a location. They have a huge Mardi Gras parade um, every year like that. This is one of the biggest, I think, in the whole country. And it says, what's new? Well, all of it's new for me because I've never been. But they have the Cajun Palms um, has rebranded to a Margaritaville RV resort. I RV'd for 15 months. Absolutely loved it. We have to do that later in the year. And I would really like to check out a Margaritaville RV park. That sounds awesome. They also have 91 luxury cabins, so you don't have to have an RV. You can just go stay in a cabin. 422 upgraded RV sites, um, with some with fire pits, concrete pads, and so forth. They have new cabanas, mini golf, a pickleball court, and a Barkaritaville dog park. How clever is that? Barkaritaville. Love that. Um, there's a couple food trails in this area. There's a po'boy food trail, gumbo, crawfish, a plate lunch, and boudin. So Boudin, oh, I love some Boudin. You know you're going to get fantastic Boudin whenever you're in Louisiana. There's 50 stops throughout the city and beyond on this trail. Um, here's a Boudin sausage if you're not familiar. They're absolutely delicious. And then they have the plate lunch. So I'm from the South, and my daughter lives in Mississippi. So Mississippi, Louisiana, Georgia, lots of Alabama. You're always going to have a plate lunch. It's a meat plus three, generally is what they call it. They call this plate lunch trail... It says, this trail lets you sample over 50 of the area's iconic plate lunches that consist of meat, gravy-covered starch, a pair of side vegetables, and a simple piece of bread. Sign me up. I could have a plate lunch every day at, for 50 days in, in this town, so I definitely need to go. Okay, and then trip ideas. Um, here's two I just wanted to point out. Cajun food tours. And this is a three-hour tasting tour, um, which also you'll experience Cajun hospitality. I'm sure you will, and I'm sure it would be a blast. Um, there are four full day tours available as well. That sounds super fun. And then there's Cycle Zydeco. This is a festival that sounds really intriguing. Are you familiar with Zydeco music? I absolutely love Zydeco music and I've heard it in New Orleans for 35 years or so. I'm also from West Virginia, so we have Mountain Stage here. And so we've had like some of the greatest uh, Zydeco performers ever on the Mountain Stage stage and I have seen them several times before. So um, that was absolutely fascinating. But it says, a four-day festival on wheels. This casual bike tour across South Louisiana includes great food, live music, and the most beautiful back roads Louisiana has to offer. That sounds really fun. Lots of great, like, bike things going on. So I love that. Again, let me just show you the pictures because the pictures are really fantastic. And that will conclude part one of where you should travel in 2023. I've got more coming for you. Pay attention. Part two is coming up. Bye.